a warm welcome and to this session of anesthesia simplified on the youtube platform myself dr hitesh nathani i am your mentor your friend for the subject of anesthesia on this wonderful platform of an academy now where can you find me on an academy you can find me on the an academy platform from the two plus courses that i have been taking one is the batch course that is of hematology bad course which i'll be taking on the 10th of july this is a integrated session remember guys this is a integrated batch course where we all educators come together to take one subject take one topic for you guys and simplify it right similar ways we have done it for central nervous system we have done it for cardiovascular system and now we are doing it for the hematological disorders right another one that i have been taking is my personal course that is the course on conceptual course in anesthesia you can find the links here also follow me on the telegram app it is by the same name that is anesthesia simplified by dr hitesh this is the link for my telegram group where you can interact with me personally you can ask me doubts there are a lot of doubt solving sessions which goes on a lot of quiz that i take there also along with that every day there is something or the other that is coming up pertaining to the subject of anesthesia those who are new to this platform remember to subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you will start getting the notification whenever we come with some other video moving on to the next that is all those who are new and who are yet to download the an academy app remember when you download the an academy app you have to find the need pg goal right once you find the need pg goal there are this tremendous amounts of live classes that are going on right now the main usp of an academy and for that matter this is the only platform in india which tells you and with we like discuss live face to face class that goes on right this is a live doubt solving sessions along with the live classes that we take daily day in and day out you can go through the free live classes and if you like them if you want to subscribe to the plus platform you can go to our an academy app go to the need pg subscription you can use my code that is dr hitesh and you will get a 10% discount on the an academy subscription yes that is my code that is dr hitesh so beginning with our today's session on the mcq discussion for anesthesia this is the question which is there on your screen the first question which one of the following is not an amide linked local anesthetic yes which of the following is not an amide link anesthetic what it is asking it is asking not an amide link local anesthetic yes options are xylocaine procaine bupivacaine and dibucaine there are four options that are given on your screen so how do we actually determine and classify local anesthetics yes local anesthetics are divided and classified as amides and esters yes that is the structural classification of local anesthetics we divide and classify them as amides and esters remember the tip to remember amides here is that this is one of the very basic tip that i am telling you because the session is vast when you want to classify they are classified on the basis of structures local anesthetics are classified on the basis of potency they are also classified on the basis of duration of action yes now we are classifying only on the basis of structures as it is asking about structural that is amide link local anesthetic amides the link and the tip to remember is as amides have i in their spelling all the local anesthetics which have the i two i's in their spelling two i's in their spelling they will be classified under amide link local anesthetic right so what are those first is dibucaine second ropivacaine third bupivacaine fourth lignocaine mepivacaine and trilocaine you can see as they have got two i in their spelling all the local anesthetics that we have written down have got two i's in their spelling what are esters these are benzocaine tetracaine procaine procaine and chloroprocaine 
so automatically upivacaine and dibucaine has been ruled out amongst the two which are present here xylocaine and procaine remember xylocaine is nothing but it is a trade name or the other name for the local anesthetic that is lignocaine yes this has been asked previously in your examinations to mind you so this question can be repeated or the topic can be repeated therefore you have to be pretty much sure when you are discussing about these questions because remember for sure as i tell my students topic are bound to be repeated questions may or may not be yes so xylocaine is nothing but it is the trade name or the other name for lignocaine lignocaine also known as lidocaine right so these are the various names of lignocaine as lignocaine has got two eyes in that it is nothing but it is a nemide so xylocaine is also ruled out so what is the correct answer here which of the following is not an amide link anesthetic local anesthetic it is procaine right guys moving on to the next question here which is there on your screen which of the following muscle relaxant is free of cardiovascular side effects over the entire clinical dose range yes which of the following muscle relaxants is free of cardiovascular effects over the entire clinical dose range options are pancuronium vecuronium atracurium and pepacurium yes so let us have a look at each and every individual local anesthetic what do you mean by cardiovascular effects of local anesthetic that means they are either histamine releasers or they have got a vagolytic action yes so amongst the following local anesthetics which is not neither an histamine releaser that means it will neither cause any histamine release when it is given or nor it will cause any vagolytic effect that means the local anesthetic sorry the muscle relaxants which cause vagolytic action they cause increase in heart rate yes so pancuronium and pepacurium has got this some amount of vagolytic action whereas atracurium is a histamine releaser yes pancuronium has got this vagolytic action pepacurium also has got some amount of vagolytic action and atracurium is an histamine releaser so what is left out here pepacurium is neither a histamine releaser it does not cause any vagolytic action that means it does not cause increase in heart rate neither when it is given it causes any histamine release so which is the best possible answer it is vecuronium remember vecuronium is the most cardio stable muscle relaxant that can be given and it is the drug of choice whenever the patient is scheduled for any cardiovascular surgeries or if the patient is having any cardiovascular ailment right so vecuronium is the drug of choice when it comes to muscle relaxant for cardio vascular surgeries or if the patient is having any cvs disorders right because it is devoid of the effects of histamine release or vagolytic effect in its entire clinical dose range right so the correct answer to this question is option b that is vecuronium moving on to the next question celiac block is given for what it is given for abdominal malignant growth it is given for chest pain is it given for sciatica or is it given for perineal pain remember just a way to remember it if you don't know what is celiac plexus block where did we studied it remember the place where you actually had read about celiac plexus right we have read about celiac plexus in the regional anesthesia in the topic regional anesthesia and in that also we read it in the truncal blockage right so in that at least you will be sure and you can be able to move out one or two options according to that one thing second what is the celiac plexus block how do we study that what are the indications what are the side effects that is asked and what is the technique to give celiac plexus block right the technique how we can give celiac plexus block so what is the indication that has been asked into this question it is mainly used for abdominal visceral pain right which is caused because of to release abdominal visceral pain it is relieved because of celiac plexus block yes and how do we have what are the reasons due to which we get abdominal visceral pain it can be either because of malignancies or it can be because of acute or chronic pancreatitis 
because of pancreatitis and abdominal malignancies that we give abdominal visceral pain that is what is ciliate plexus block is used to treat that to alleviate to diminish the pain that is because of abdominal visceral pain right what are the causes for abdominal visceral pain it is either malignancy or pancreatitis yes so what is the technique by which we give ciliate plexus block it is given at the l1 vertebra anterior to the body of anterior to the l1 vertebral body anterior to the l1 vertebral body yes we guide the needle anterior to the body of l1 vertebra that is where the celiac place plexus of chain sympathetic plexus of celiac plexus lies and that is where we go and deposit the local anesthetic yes so when you block the sympathetic chain of ganglia of celiac plexus what happens one of the major side effects or complications that is which is asked time and again yes or it can also be a confirmatory factor that yes your celiac plexus block is now successful it is postural hypertension postural hypertension is what we get usually because of that and some of the other side effects are because of iv injection accidental intravascular injection we get local anesthesia systemic toxicity features and also since aorta is lying just anterior to it there are high chances of intravascular injections at just anterior to the l1 body of vertebra or injury to the aorta as well yes postural hypertension is one of the most common side effects which is seen because of celiac plexus block this is also one of the very important point when it comes to this so what is the correct answer to this question celiac block is given for which what is the indication it is either malignancy or pancreatitis so abdominal malignancy growth abdominal malignancy or pancreatitis yes to relieve or alleviate the pain because of abdominal viscera so that is the correct answer here moving on to the next question this is based upon your cpr in cpr the number of chest compressions in adult yes what is the number of chest compression that we give in adults is it 80 to 100 per minute 100 to 120 per minute uh, 120 to 200 per minute or 60 to 80 per minute yes remember the guidelines changed from 2010 to 2015 yes now we call it what we call it cpcr that is cardio pulmonary cerebral resuscitation yes in 2010 what were the number of chest compression we used to give what was the guidelines it was more than 100 per minute yes that was a basic guideline but what was the upper limit it was not mentioned it was just mentioned that more than 100 per minute are the number of chest compression that are to be given when you institute cpr but now that is the guidelines that we are following from the american heart association guidelines we give chest compressions in the range 100 to 120 per minute right it is 100 to 120 per minute it should not be less than 100 it should not be more than 120 that is 100 to 120 per minute are the number of chest compressions that we give be it adult be it pediatric population or be it children yes irrespective whether it is adult or pediatric chest compression that you are giving that is the number of chest compression has to be in the range 100 to 120 per minute yes so the correct answer to this question is option b that is 100 to 120 per minute yes then next question which are asked are compression is to ventilation ratio in adult and pediatric you should know about that and also one of the major changes which have been brought about from 2010 to 2015 guidelines in 2010 the bls was in the format of abc that is airway was secured first then breaths and then compressions this was one of the major overhauls which was brought brought about in 2015 it changed from abc to cab that means chest compressions first we start with early chest compressions then we go and manage the airway and last one to be done is breaths right so C A B chest compressions form the core of your CPR protocol and as early as early you start with the chest compressions as early you give the defibrillation the better is the prognosis or the outcome for the patient yes the number of chest compression as the question is asked here it is 100 to 120 per minute next question on repeated use of which of the following inhalational anesthetic agent causes hepatitis repeated use of which of the following inhalational anesthetic agent cause hepatitis is it isoflurane sevoflurane ether or halothane yes one trip to remember that hepatitis starts with h therefore the 
Inhalational anesthetic agent which causes hepatitis also starts with it that is halothin. Remember halothin has got some notorious properties. One of them is it causes halothin hepatitis. Why does it cause halothin hepatitis? When halothin is metabolized, metabolism of halothin results into the formation of a compound that is known as trifluoroacetate. Yes, this compound is causes autoimmune disorders, autoimmune reaction, which leads to formation of antibodies and which leads to hepatocellular destruction. Yes, so therefore, this metabolite which is formed that is trifluoroacetate results in autoimmune response which results in hepatitis now remember this hepatitis can be of two types either it can be self limiting that is known as hepatitis type 1 yes or it can be of type 2 type 2 hepatitis is what it is necrotizing hepatitis this self-limiting hepatitis is got very peculiar feature that only the enzymes of liver are raised. Okay, only the enzymes are raised here. But what happens in necrotizing hepatitis? It is life-threatening. And in this self-limiting hepatitis, what happens? Only the enzymes are raised, and it usually recovers in three to six weeks. Yes. What is the incidence of halothin hepatitis or necrotizing hepatitis that is caused because of halothin? It is 1 in 35,000 cases. Yes, so one patient in 35,000 will have this incidence of halothin hepatitis which is caused because of this metabolite TFA. Halothin hepatitis is one of the dreaded conditions. It is because of the repeated use of halothin, particularly when you use it within 30 days, within 90 days. And also some patients are very much prone for this. So which are the patients who are prone for halothin hepatitis? Already who have got increased liver enzymes or liver derangement or pregnant females or elderly females already the patients who have got deranged LFTs and elderly females these are very much prone for this halothane induced hepatitis right so which of the following inhalational anesthetics causes hepatitis on repeated exposure it is option D that is halothane yes so that's all guys. Wish you all the best. Study hard, stay motivated and stay disciplined.